Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd do today is continue our Gladiator build series and talk about refrigeration. I've got a couple different ice cold refrigerators, one much larger than the other. And I'd like to discuss the JP40 with you today because it's the one that I've been using most in my Gladiator. I've got a much larger version that we keep down at camp at the school to keep food in for the instructors for the weekend and cold drinks and things like that that we run off solar power. And I'm running this JP40 off the Jackery 1500 right now. And it does a really, really good job. I'll answer some of those questions as we go. But let's first talk about what this thing comes with and how it operates. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how this thing comes in the box. You get it in the box, it comes with two handles that are disassembled inside the cooler. Not a big deal. It's a five-minute job to put them on. They give you the tool to do that with. You get the regular receptacle plug that you can plug this thing into your house or into an extension cord so that you can keep the thing running. You also get a 12 volt plug, which I have plugged into it now, going to the Jackery, so that you can run it off 12 volt DC. So it comes with an AC and a DC plug both. Now, it comes with this cover that zips over the top of it to give it some extra insulation. And it comes with an interior rack with divider. You've got a refrigerated area and you've got a freezer area. And then you can set this thing on economy mode or max mode to cool it down faster if you're trying to go from the bottom up. Okay, as you can see here on the back of this dude, you've got a 100 to 240 volt plug area here. And you can plug that, like I said, into the receptacle at your house or at a campground, something like that, if you're trying to keep this thing running or in your house in an emergency. You've got a fuse that you can't see behind this. It's a 15 amp fuse, just like a regular car fuse that you can pull out if it blows. And then you've got 12, 24 volt DC in, and that's what we're running right now. The control screen on this is pretty easy. Not sure why the numbers are flashing in the camera because they're not flashing on the unit. Must be something to do with filming speed. Kind of odd, I've never noticed anything like that before. I've got it set on max right now. It's sitting at 21 degrees. I just fired the thing back up from it being down, and I'll put that footage in here. Somebody's gonna ask about how this thing holds temperature if you lose power. And I actually ran this thing for almost a day and a half on no power and just let it sit. And the temperature went down to what you're seeing now, about 21 degrees from zero. So the temperature came up to 21 degrees from zero. Now I bring it back down to zero out here plugged into the jackery. Again, now I've got it recharged. I was on the road and didn't have a chance to charge it up. I had a couple guys asking about this cooler, what happens with power interruption. I let this jackery run all the way to the bottom. And it's been off for over 24 hours. I've just now got it back to 2% charge and turned this cooler back on. And when I turned it back on, it was at 28 degrees. So it's been off for over 24 hours and maintained below freezing temperature inside this unit. You've got plus minus settings here where you can drop down all the way to minus six. I've got it set on zero, zero right now. So it's cooling down to that. You have an econo mode and a max mode here by switching this control button here. And then you have an on off. You just hold the button down and it turns it off. Hold it down for three seconds again to turn it back on. Four simple buttons here. Very, very easy operation. And then it's got a simple lid that opens up here. Nice and cold inside. I've got some bratwurst in there. Some steak fajita meat. Some other steak for a stir fry in there. I've got some frozen chicken gizzards in there. And then I've got some pork chops in there. You can see the ice on that. That thing is frozen. So I've got one bottle of water in there and I've got a refrigerated section up here. It's got a couple of can of OJs in there and a couple cans of Monster in there. So I've got not stacked full by any means, but I've got enough meat in here to keep me going for two or three days. And I have drinks in here for an overnight, easy enough, maybe two. You've got a chart right here inside that tells you what temperature to keep things at. Water, 41 degrees. Drinks, 41 degrees. All the way down to seafood at 27. Meat at zero. I also wanted to give you a quick interior shot here. It's got a divider in here in this basket. And the whole basket lifts out. You can see I've got meat stored in here. Like I said a minute ago. And then I've got cold drinks stored in the top refrigerator section of this thing 
but you can also put two liters. You can see those cutouts in the bottom of the cooler. Take this rack completely out. You can store two liter pop bottles in there as well. But this holds, like I said, a full size Tropicana, full size 16 ounce drink. You just have to keep any high points like this to the front so it don't interfere with this lip closing when it closes down. You put those high drinks to the back, it won't let the lid close. So those are in the front and the 16 ounce cans are in the back. It's got a light on the inside to light it up when you open it up. It's got a catchment here to keep the lid from flying all the way open. Again, it's got a nice latch on it that latches down tight and clicks when you close it. And then it's got this extra jacket here that you can use with it. That's got a screen cut out on it here so it can breathe when the fan is running. It's got a window on it here so you can see what your temperature settings are. And it zips all the way around to give it an extra layer of insulation around the fridge freezer itself. You can hear it running now. It's really, really quiet. And then we've got it plugged in here to the DC outlet on the Jackery. 1500. So guys, I appreciate you joining me out here today for this video on the Ice Code JP40. You can click the link that I've got in my description box and that will take you to Amazon where you can purchase this and full disclosure, of course, I do get a small percentage on any sales from my Amazon store, but I'm not working directly with Ice Code to do any kind of a promotional percentage of sales or anything like that. I don't like doing that with companies. I'd rather just receive the product if they want me to review it. And then I'm kind of at my own on my own hook to say yes it's good or no it's not and generally if i have a problem with the unit i'll call the company first and let them know hey i don't think you really want me to do a review on this because i don't like it but i don't take money from the companies generally speaking i will just take the merchandise if i don't like it they're welcome to have it back if i do like it then i consider that you know their payment for me giving them a good solid review and testing the product in the field which I'm sure a lot of times products don't get tested well in the field before they get reviewed. So that's one thing that I'm really kind of picky about with companies and they don't like to send me products because they're not gonna send it to me this week and get a review next week. I don't work that way. Like I said, I've had this thing for way over a month now and they've been bothering me about the reviews and sending me emails, hey, when are we gonna get a review? And I'm like, you know what? When I'm done testing it, when I'm confident in it, when I know how well it works and I can speak to how good the quality is, you'll get a review but not until then. Guys, I appreciate your support and I appreciate your views. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. And by the way, guys, no, I am not sponsored by Jeep. I've owned Jeep since 1981. I bought my first Jeep. I've had a Jeep almost ever since. I've had everything from Wagoneers to CJs to YJs, XJs, KJs, and now I've got a JT. So I've had lots and lots of Jeeps in my life, but this is the first brand new Jeep I ever bought. And I like it really well. And that's why I kind of started doing videos surrounding this build, because it's something that I enjoy doing. And if you're not enjoy doing it, why would you want to film it? Thanks guys.